I want to talk to you this morning about how to conquer fear. And I know it seems strange on a day like this, but first of all, I'd like to read you something out of Matthew chapter 21. And when they drew down to Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage under the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord hath need of them. And straightway he will send them. And this was done, that it might be fulfilled was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell you the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a coat, the hold of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat, and put on them their clothes, and set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others kept, cut down branches for the trees, and strode them in the way. And the multitudes that went before, and that followed, crying, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And it was coming to Jerusalem. All the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, I ask you to give us the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to understand thy word and get a blessing from on high that only you can give to each one that's listening and watching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now this Sunday is what we call Palm Sunday. Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 11 is where we get this title. Here Jesus, the Son of God, comes into Jerusalem, riding on the back of a donkey, people running ahead of him, placing their clothes and their tree limbs to him to ride in on. Here is the King of kings and Lord of lords marching on down the cross of Calvary. And yet Israel saw a king on a throne, crying Hosanna to the Son of David. But Jesus did not come into this world just to be a king. He is the king of the world. Jesus came into this world to save sinners from their sins. In John chapter 1, verse 29, says, The next day John saith, seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Also, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world. So he's including everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now here's what I'm getting at. If you know, if you understand who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for us on Calvary, then you understand God is working through a plan of all the ages. And if you're saved by God's grace through faith, and Jesus finished work on Calvary. Jesus not only died for our sins, he also rose again for our justification. We now have victory over our sins in Christ Jesus. Now realizing who Jesus is and what he has done for us, then and then only can we have confidence and know God does everything well and good. Now at this time in history, this is where this world is going through a a terrible time time in this virus situation and killing people all over the world. People's hearts are failing them for fear. It's like a, I just heard on the news as I left home a few minutes ago, a nurse is doing her best to take care of this uh, virus, people that's got the virus, and she ended up committing suicide herself. Now, what I'd like to show you from God's word is how to conquer fear. Uh, if you have a Bible, and I pray you have, turn to Revelation chapter 1 for a minute, and I'd just like to read you a few verses. Now, Revelation chapter 1, uh, just, I'd just like to take two verses, verse 17 and verse 18. And when I saw him, that is Jesus, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. 
Now, notice here the Bible is one place that you can find the answer when it comes to the question of fear. In Revelation chapter 1, if you take the time and read verses 9 through 18, uh, God has given a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ in his victory. I believe one of the greatest problems people face today, as it always has been, is mortal fear. It also, it was part of the mission and message of Jesus to deliver mankind from the horrible grips of fear itself. One of the most surprising things I found out about our stressful, nervous, and modern civilization is the fact that most people are in the stronghold of fear. And the fact affects all classes of people. It's the high, it's the low, it's the rich, it's the poor, it's the educated, it's the ignorant, it's the old, it's the young. They have fears of all kinds. Fear of themselves, fear of others, fear of the past, fear of the present, fear of the future, fear of sickness, fear of death, fear of poverty. You can go on and on of things that people are afraid of. Now, Bible is the one place that gives the answer to these questions. There are two words that stand out like mountain peaks in the Bible. The words, fear not. When these words, God comforted Abraham. God said to Abram, I am, the she I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. With these two words, God comforted Isaac at his lonely task of digging wells in the wilderness. With these two words, God comforted Jacob when his little boy Joseph was lost somewhere down in Egypt. With these two words, God comforted the, the Israelites at the Red Sea when Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. These two words, fear not, stand out here and there in the Bible, a part of the great Christian inheritance. The greatest thing we can do is note very carefully wherever these words occur in the Bible and note uh, their relation uh, of what it's relating to us to. Now, three supreme matters which concern every man, and I mean every man, that is life, death, and eternity. Here in Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, 18, God, builds us, God bids us to be unafraid of life and of death and eternity. Now, I want to take each one of these three for just a minute. Number one, Jesus tells us to be unafraid of life. I've met a lot of people in my lifetime since I've been pastoring and preaching that are just afraid to live. They're just afraid of life itself. They're afraid of what tomorrow is going to bring. Verse 17 and 18, Jesus said, He is the first and the last, and he that lives. Now, is the fear of life real to you today? That's what I'm talking about. To a many persons it is. Fear is constantly with many. This one fact alone is the explanation for many a suicide. I was listening to our president today, and one of the things that he's concerned about, and we all ought to be concerned about is, uh, that people, that this virus is killing people and people losing their jobs and losing their means of uh, sustaining themselves, and they can't live with life itself and afraid they're gonna lose everything they got. Now, two men I preached funerals for each putting a gun to their heads and killing themselves. Both were afraid uh, uh, they would lose their younger wife to some older man. One I personally dealt with who tried cutting their wrists, said they couldn't cope with their debts. One I personally dealt with who tried cutting their wrists, uh, another young girl, I went to see her mother after she overdosed on drugs and here's what her mother said. She just couldn't fit in with a crowd. Many a person today is afraid to go on with their life. I believe I know the answer. People are afraid because they are so dependent. Here's what I'm saying. We're utterly dependent upon God and greatly dependent upon each other. Sometimes you'll hear some proud, smart aleck say, I'm an independent. I'm independent of myself. I don't need anyone. And you know what the Bible says, and I believe it all my soul, wrong. Let that same person tell us, please, of whom is he independent 
and how and where and when and why. Because we're all bound together in a bundle of life. The Bible says, for none of us live it to himself, and no man dies to himself. Again, we are afraid because we are continually in the presence of great mysteries. The mystery of sin. I don't understand sin. It's a mystery to me. The mystery of sorrow. Uh, the mystery of God. I've tried all these years to understand the very word itself, God, and the person of the Godhead. I don't understand. It's a mystery to me. The mystery of our own personality. But we're different from one another. The strange and oft trying providence that come into our lives every day. And we say, things come into our life every day, and we say, I just don't understand this. Now, most of us ask ourselves questions like these. Is this battle of life? Will I come out all right? Will I disappoint the expectations of our loved ones and friends? And I can say to you today that is one of the reasons God had pinned down the experiences of great men in the Bible. Even Moses trembled before his mighty responsibilities, and he said this in fear. Oh, my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since that I have spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And so you find Moses, that great man of God, he trembled in fear of the great responsibility that was put upon him. Even Solomon trembled at his vast responsibility, saying, And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. That's the very way I felt when God called me to preach. I'll never ever forget that feeling. Many times in life we were like Paul, who said, Who is sufficient for these things? Many times we have to make the important decisions, and a lot of times, life or death decisions. We say with Paul, who is sufficient for these things? Yet Jesus always comes to us saying, do not be afraid of life. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. That's why I love that old song that old brother Roloff used to sing all the time, constantly abide, Jesus is mine. You don't have to be afraid of life. And Jesus is always with you. You know what God expects out of us today when it comes to life? It's living it every day. It's God gives it to us. Whatever comes your way, just live it. God will take care of you. Again, Jesus bids us to be unafraid of death. Now, verse 18 says in Revelation, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. It's no wonder that death casts it's uh, oppressive shadows about us because death is an experience utterly strange to every one of us. I like what old Dr. Harold Seidler said one time. He said that God gives us a grace for everything in this world. He said, now I haven't ex experienced the grace of dying yet because I haven't died yet. And I, I got news for you. I haven't died yet, so I don't know what that thing, death, is going to be like. But uh, Paul, a poet, wrote this. It is a born whence no traveler returns. The black camel kneels at every gate. With equal place, impartial faith, knocks at the palace and the cottage gate. People today are trying to get to the other planet, hoping never to die. Some are trying to spend their bodies in frozen state, hoping to revive one day in, in a deathless world. Some won't be near, and when they, they have to, uh, wife, after trying to keep the germs away, hoping never to die. Now, Jesus wants us to know more about death. Jesus knows all about the grave. You know why? He's been there. Jesus one day destroyed completely our last enemy, death. He said he will destroy it one day. Jesus is always with his people when they come to die. John Wesley, that great old preacher, once said, our people die well. And I can say that by being a pastor and being with a many, many a person that's died as a Christian. And I can say with John Wesley, Christians die well. Amen.
And so we find that Jesus wants to be us to be unafraid, unafraid of death. Here's another one. Jesus bids us to be unafraid of eternity. Now, in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, is one of our, our favorite scriptures, and I'd just like to read it to you. Uh, most of us have read it so many times we could uh, quote it almost, uh, but the older I get, the less I can quote it. So I'd like to read it to you. John 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not where thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Now, again, Jesus simply said, because I live, you shall live also. That's good enough for me. Amen? Now, Jesus is my pilot. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my savior. Jesus is my advocate. Jesus is my promised and infallible guide, even unto death and to the vast beyond forever. Can you say that? Now listen, he leadeth me. I want to read you something if I can in 2 Kings for just a moment. In 2 Kings and uh, chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6, I want to read you one verse. Listen to this verse 16. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be what with us are more than they be with them. I read that so many times and I thought about it. Let's go back and read verse 13 for just a minute. And he said, Go and spy where he is that I may see him and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and could pass the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, and gone forth, behold, a host from past of the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, a mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire, round about Elijah, Elijah. One of the greatest things that I know with all my heart is that God has a host of angels watching over his own. Now the problem with the world today and the diseases and everything else that's going on in the world today is that man is a sinner and sin has to be paid for. I'm not saying one man is worse than the other and that's why he's sick or that's why he's got disease. That's not the problem. It's like a man that I preached at the funeral and they said he died of a heart attack. No, he didn't. He died because of sin. Because the Bible says that sin bringeth forth death. Now I got news for you. As you see on the TV and you hear the newscasters and you hear everybody just losing their mind and, and running about in fear and and just afraid of everything, afraid to touch everything, afraid to go any place, afraid to do anything. It's a it's a fearful thing to live in the world that we live in right now without confidence, without just a peace of mind that knoweth God doeth all things well. And I believe this with all my soul. There's one payment for sin, and that's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Jesus died on the cross, and if you go back now to Matthew chapter 21, it's one of the sweetest stories, I suppose, that you can read in the Bible. Let, let me just put it to you this way. Jesus, the Son of God, has been born into this world through a little maiden virgin. He's lived now for 33 years on this earth. He's headed straight for Calvary. Nothing can keep him to go into Calvary to die for the sins of the whole world. Jesus is the king of all the earth. 
But what the children of Israel was looking for was a king riding in on a great horse, a great stallion, and taking the crown upon his head and leading them out of captivity and so they could have peace on this earth. Now, Jesus is the Prince of Peace, no doubt about that. But what I'm trying to show you today, Jesus did not come at that particular time to set up his kingdom upon this earth. Jesus came to do one thing at that time. He came in this world to save sinners from their sin. And so he headed to the cross. And the devil's done everything in the world that he could possibly do since the beginning of time to get people to not see that that person that came in this world some 2,000 years ago was not just another man. He was not just a king coming to sit upon a throne. He's God, and he's God in the flesh, and he came to do one thing, and that was to die for the sins of mankind. Now, what gives us that peace of mind? It's like I've said a million times before I was saved. I would lay my head down on my pillow at night, and I'd count my heartbeats because I'd read in a book summers that uh, a man in good health, he only has so many heartbeats over a lifetime. So I began to count them and I uh, and worry about how many more I got before I die. Now, I didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. But when I met him and took him as my personal Savior one night, after that, I could lay my head down and never worry about it again. You know why? Because I find in the Bible, in the uh, book of Romans, where it said, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, wait a minute. That's only to one class of people. That's to save people. That's to born again people. That's the people who have took the blood of Jesus Christ by faith and applied them to their sin. They're the only one that can have that peace of mind. I believe this is all of my mind tonight. I, at this point, is, is this fact. You know why I got peace today? And I really do. There's, there's a sweet peace all the time in my soul. I know that God will take care of me. You know why? I'm one of his. I don't belong to the devil's crowd anymore. I belong to God. I'm one of his children. By faith in his son and what he did upon the cross for me. Life is sweet. I, I've thought about this many times. Why was I born? I don't know except for one reason. God has took care of me, and I believe it was to preach his word. I believe it with all my soul. Well, what a privilege just to be born into this world and live a long, good life. And God has blessed me on every side. I love life and everything that goes with it. I hear people all the time talking about pain and talk about anguish. And you know what? Pain, in a sense, is good for you. Anguish is good for you, in a sense. And I, I know nobody likes pain, nobody likes anguish, but it'll teach you something. It'll teach you what good is. It'll teach you how it feels good when you feel good. Amen? There's a reason for everything. God gives a reason for everything. Now, what gives me peace is I know my Heavenly Father that will take care of me, and He does everything in His time. And he's a good God. Amen. And he wants to bless you. I don't have to fear life. I don't have to fear dying. For the simple reason is that I'm not going to die. Every child of God that accepts Christ as their Savior by faith in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, every child of God will never die. We're absent from the body and present with the Lord. I laughed at a man that's coming and giving my wife therapy. And uh, he's from one of the islands. And I was talking to him just yesterday. And I uh, told him about being uh, saved and about getting ready to go to heaven. And uh, he, he talked about dying and this virus catching it. He's afraid he's going to get it going around. And he was talking about it so on. And, and uh, he said, I got a place to bury me in three different countries. I said, well, goodness sake, well, you got three. You can't die but one place. And he said, yeah, but I got one in a, on an island. And he said, I got to, up there, I, I want them to care. I don't want to be cremated, he says. I want them to carry me up there in my body and bury me where I can see the sun come up and that beautiful sunrise and all those beautiful mountains and everything around it. And I looked at him and I said, are you out of your mind? If you die, 
You're not going to be there. You're not going to be in that grave. You're not going to be in that body. You're going to be in one of two places. You're either going to be in heaven or you're going to be in hell. Absent of body is present with the Lord, and he'll say to you, part, I never knew you, or he'll say, come and enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Oh, he said, I can't believe that. He said, I'm going to be buried in my body. I said, okay, suppose you do. What are you going to do if you have your somebody you leave your eye to uh, when you die to help somebody see? Or maybe you'll have a heart transplant and somebody else has your heart. He said, well, I'll just tell them, give it back to me. I want to see you again. And give it back to me on my heart again. I said, that ain't the way it works, buddy. Have some bodies present with the Lord. When you die, I'm not afraid of death. And I'm not worried about that casket. And I'm not worried about going to the ground. I know that I'm going to be with the Lord and I will never die. And if you'll read John 14, verses 1 through 6, you'll understand something. Jesus has already prepared a place, particularly for every one of his children. You can't have that place. It's mine. And God prepared it for me. And you have a place in Christ Jesus and he's prepared for you. So I don't worry about life. I don't worry about death, but I sure don't worry about eternity. I, I'm excited about it. I say all the time, I don't worry about dying whatsoever. I'm not afraid of death, not one bit. The only thing I'm concerned about is how I'm going to die. I don't want somebody shooting me or somebody running over me or something. I'd just like to go from this life out of the other. I'd like to be preaching one day and God said, just come on home. Uh, and I'd just like to die that way. But I don't know how I'm going to die, but I sure know one thing. Uh, death to me is not annihilation. It's not just laying down this old body and that's the end of it. No, no. I got a brand new body waiting for me. And I got news for you. There's no pain in it. There's no fear in it. And absent body is present the Lord. Have, have you ever thought about this? That person had come riding into that city where we read first. He's very God of all gods. He's the creator of everything. Anything you desire, anything that man's mind could imagine, God's got it for you. And he's got it waiting on you. In a brand new environment where no tears, no death, none of the things that we're afraid of down here is not going to bother us up there. What a glorious thought absent the body for all eternity. So don't be afraid. Now, you don't have to be afraid of life. You don't have to be afraid of death. You don't have to be afraid of eternity. What you need to do is like one man came to the disciples, the jailer in Acts, and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And you know what his answer was? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. You know why he added thy house there? Because he said, leave on Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and anybody else that you meet. It's going to have to come the same way. Believe on Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Somebody said, what does that mean, preacher? It simply believe, it, it simply means, do you believe with all your heart? Did that person some 2,000 years ago that came in this world was God in the flesh. He was absolutely sinless perfect. He was a sin sacrifice. The only one. He came in this world to offer himself for your sins. If you was the only one on the face of this earth, Jesus would have come and died for you. Because he said in John 3.16, he came in this world to die for sin of the whole world. Now that's, that's what the relief of fear is all about. And when you trust Christ as your Savior and realize that the God that created the heaven and the earth, Jesus said in John chapter 10, as many as my Father giveth me, no man can pluck them out of my Father's hand. That's safe. That's secure. When I was a little boy on the farm, my daddy carried us to town. I never will forget it. And he left me asleep in the front seat of the car. And I, I, I suppose I was about six years old, had to be, and no bigger than that. But I felt so secure 
as long as my daddy was around. I felt so secure that I fell asleep laying there on the seat, so he went in the store. And I never will forget that fright, that fear of waking up. My daddy was not there. Them big old farm hands that he used to reach down and let me hold, it was not there. And I got afraid and I started crying. And then my daddy come out of the store and come, what's the matter, son? And I ran and grabbed the hold of him and he reached down and grabbed my hand. The security of having hold of my daddy's hand. Boy, what a feeling that was. I can still think about it to this day. And here I am, 84 years old, and I can still remember how wonderful it felt for my daddy to reach down and grab my hand. Now, I got news for you today. You might be going through a hard time in your life where it's a financial situation in your life you can't handle, where it's your family affair in your life you can't handle, where it's money, where it's position. I don't care what you're afraid of in this life. Jesus holds your hand if you're his, and he will never let go. That's where peace is. That's where no fear is. That's where you don't worry about it. You say, Lord, whatever will be, will be. And I know you're going to take care of it. Amen? So I would encourage you, if you have never took Christ to your Savior, here's how you do it. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 says, Is that, aren't you glad he put that word there? And he didn't put the word to do. If he did, I'm the only one who could have got saved. But he didn't say that. He said, For if thou, that's anybody, I don't care who you are or what you've done. Yeah, that if thou shalt confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Then verse 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know what you have to do? You have to call on the Lord. You have to say, Lord Jesus, save me. I believe you're the Savior. And you know what the Bible says? He'll do it. Amen? Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, would you bless the message to every heart have your perfect will and your way and accomplish what you would have the word to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.